you were a young man of, say, 15, 16, 17 years old, and you wanted to get married, and you wanted to start a family, you had to prove that you were an adult, and that you were a competent adult who could become a head of household. And one of the ways that you would do this would be to take those baobab trees that we saw, so many of, and strip the bark off and weave baobab bark into rope and make a kind of rope. And once you showed that you could do that in a way where it wasn't going to fall apart, where you could count on the rope, it was good and reliable rope, then you were a man. And among other signs of being a man, you could, you could then, once you proved all these other things, then you could become an adult and you could start to seek a wife. And now, nobody makes baobab rope anymore. You can go to a market like this and you can buy manufactured, cheap rope. The, the other thing about this song is that it's a wildly popular song, and people really love this song. The prayer and, and song? They, they respect, what's that? The, the call to prayer? No, not that <laughs> song, this song. Uh, which is about science, and it's about the Dogen people. The Dogen people who fled Islam, and around the 11th century, when Islam was coming across, as I was mentioning before, coming across the Sahara, the Dogen didn't want to convert. Uh, and the Dogen, who lived somewhere north of, of where we are now, led to the, the Bandiagara cliffs, which we'll see tomorrow, to a highland area where they could escape those who, the, those who might seek to make them Muslim. Now, you're going to see that the Dogen have an extremely rich and complex culture, uh, that the Dogen have very fascinating beliefs about cosmology, about how the universe was created, about why men and women are the way they are, about what what it means to be alive and what the purpose of life is. And this is reflected in their art, in their architecture, in their, in their uh, sculpture, in their dance, in their rituals. I'm going to focus just on one feature of that, which in some ways is the central feature, and about which there's a controversy. In some ways, the centerpiece of Dogen culture is the Fonio ceremony. The Fonio ceremony happens every 60 years in Dogen society. The next one is in the year 2025. We missed it, <coughs> whatever. 35 years ago. In the Fonio ceremony, the Dogen undergo a series of community rituals designed to ensure that the Fonio, which is the Dogen word for millet, the staple crop, will be fertile and productive for the next 60 years. So this is the real part of Dogen culture and economics, that you've got to have Fonio. Fonio is associated and the Fonio celebration every 60 years is associated with the star Sirius, the brightest star in the northern sky, which the Dogon know about. The Dogons say that every 60 years, a dark thing of special matter, which goes around Sirius, comes to a point in front of Sirius. And then every 60 years, it circles around and comes back again. And that's why they have the Fonio celebration when they do. How did the Dogen know anything about this? Oh, I forgot to say one thing. In the 1930s, radio astronomy was invented, and radio astronomy finds that there is a neutron star which does not shine, but is very heavy and dense, orbiting Sirius. It's called Sirius B. And the cycle of its orbit is every 60 years. Remember Eric Von Donneken? From, like supermarket shelf fame, their issues, I would simply say this is a fascinating little twist and turn. When we have time later, I'll tell you about the chief anthropologist of the Dogon, the person who's really responsible for everything we know and think about the Dogon, Marcel Griol. And Marcel Griol, in his writings in the 40s, really made the Dogon a celebrated group. He's been restudied in the 1980s and 90s, and virtually everything that Marcel Griol found and taught us about Dogen culture cannot be found again by other anthropologists. No one has been able to confirm what Griol says is true about Dogen culture. And what Griol says is true about Dogen culture is the reason why Dogen masks are so expensive. And it's the reason why we're going there in some ways. So, let me just leave you with the takeaway point. Even in very poor and traditional places, I would want to suggest to you that cultures are like living organisms. Here and elsewhere, they can change and they can adapt, sometimes very quickly and sometimes very slowly. And so when we look at so-called traditional places and traditional primitive societies, it's important for us to look through lenses that enable us to see this creativity, this agency, this inventiveness. Thanks for your attention.